If you're wondering why so many people love TrueNAS, the biggest reason is simple, and it's ZFS. TrueNAS is great on its own, but ZFS is what makes it special. You get end-to-end -end checksums, snapshots, self-healing, scrubs, and amazing replication, all in one file system designed for long-term data integrity. In this video, I'll show why ZFS is the real benefit of TrueNAS, how it differs from file systems like BTRFS, and the real advantages you'll feel day to day so you can decide if it's time to switch. Let's start with the simplest things that a user generally wants. Your data should be exactly what you saved today or years from now. As time goes on, hard drives and SSDs can flip bits silently. That basically means that a one turns into a zero without you knowing. And that can happen to a file by just sitting there. And worse, the drive where the data is sitting might think that everything is fine. Most file systems take the drive's word for it, but ZFS doesn't. Every block of data and every piece of metadata in ZFS is protected by a checksum, which is like a short fingerprint. When ZFS reads data, it checks the fingerprint. If the fingerprint doesn't match, ZFS knows the data is corrupted. ZFS then attempts to repair the file, which is where self-healing comes in. In order to repair the file though, ZFS needs to have the correct data somewhere. This is where your pool and VDEV come in. ZFS groups drives together in a structure called a VDEV, and depending on how you set it up, it can mirror data across drives or spread it out with parity using RAID Z1, Z2, or Z3, which simply means one, two, or three drives can fail without losing the VDEV. Then when ZFS finds a bad block on one drive, it finds a good copy from another drive in the VDEV and fixes the bad one. This happens automatically. You don't need to notice the problem and you don't need to run a special tool to fix it. The checksum tells it what the correct data should be and redundancy provides a trustworthy source of that data to rebuild from. Now the core idea of ZFS and how this all works is because ZFS is copy on write. When data changes, ZFS writes the new data to a fresh location first. Only when the entire write is complete and verified does ZFS update the pointer to say use the new version. This means that if power fails mid-write, the old version is still intact. This is very different from older file systems that might overwrite data in place and leave you with a half-written file if something goes wrong. Copy on write is the foundation that makes ZFS snapshots, clones, and reliable recovery possible. For snapshots, they freeze your data at a specific point in time, but it doesn't duplicate everything. Because of copy on write, the snapshot marks which blocks belong to your data at that point in time. Only changes after the snapshot create new blocks. The result is that you can take snapshots frequently, hourly, daily, or before big changes without using huge amounts of data. Rolling back to a snapshot is fast as well because ZFS just flips pointers back to the saved state. Restoring a single file from a snapshot is also fast because the file system knows exactly where the old version is. Clones, which I won't spend much time on, are like snapshots that you can write to. The clone starts as an exact copy, but as you change the clone, it uses new blocks while sharing the unchanged ones with the snapshot. So you'll get two versions of the same data set, but they won't take up double the space. Now we spoke about pools and VDEVs, but the pool is really just a big flexible space. Inside that space, you create data sets for things like documents, photos, VMs, backups, your applications, everything. Each data set can have its own rules, compression on or off, record size tuned for the type of data it's storing, quotas to limit growth, and reservations to guarantee space. You're not locked into one set of settings for the entire pool, it's based on the data set. After you configure your pool and data sets, you can set up data scrubs, which are a maintenance feature for data protection. A scrub is a scheduled check where ZFS reads all data, verifies each checksum, and repairs anything that isn't perfect using the redundant copy that exists. If you run scrubs regularly, you get ahead of bit rot and silent errors before they turn into real data loss. Now, data integrity is arguably the biggest reason why people love ZFS but there are really granular controls that you can use to improve performance as well. ZFS uses adaptive replacement cache, or what you'll most likely hear it as, ARC. L1 ARC, which you'll hear fairly regularly, 
is a memory-based cache that keeps frequently used data in RAM. Because RAM is much faster than disks, reads that hit the ARC cache feel instant. That's the first layer of cache, but if you have a spare NVMe or SSD, you can add an L2 ARC, which is an extra read cache on fast storage. But you shouldn't configure L2 ARC until you max out your system's RAM and get the most out of L1 ARC. L1 and L2 ARC are for improving read performance, but let's talk about writing data. For write safety, ZFS uses a special write ahead log called the ZIL or ZFS intent log. If you place a dedicated low latency device called a slog, synchronous writes like those from databases or NFS, if you enable sync, can write quickly, but more importantly, safely. These are optional features that truthfully, most users won't use because you're not gonna have the hardware on hand. This is not something that you can use consumer grade hardware for generally but you can see how much flexibility you have with ZFS. Another pretty big benefit of ZFS is compression. ZFS can compress most data on the fly, which often saves a lot of space with minimal slowdown, especially on modern CPUs. Text files, logs, and many databases compress extremely well. Even media libraries with photos and videos can see savings. You can change the compression setting per dataset, like we mentioned before, which means you can pick and choose if you do or do not want to compress the data. Now, everything we talked about up to this point was how ZFS stores your data and how you can access that data. But to me, the biggest benefit of ZFS is how it handles backups and offsite copies. If you're running ZFS, you basically need to configure snapshots, but those snapshots can be sent to another ZFS system over the network with ZFS replication, which is arguably my favorite feature and TrueNAS makes it super simple. The first time, ZFS sends the full snapshot. After that, it only sends the differences between snapshots. This makes backups fast and network friendly because you're only sending the difference. Since snapshots are consistent and reflect an exact point in time, your backup is reliable and easy to roll back to. The final point I wanna hit on is encryption. ZFS offers native encryption, which lets you encrypt an entire pool or individual datasets with passphrases or keys. Datasets can inherit encryption or stay locked and you can unlock them when needed. You can also mix unencrypted and encrypted datasets. Since encryption happens in ZFS itself, the checksumming and snapshots will still work the same way. The encrypted datasets can even be used with snapshots and ZFS replication. So your offsite machine doesn't need to trust the network it's on as you can leave fully encrypted data sets on the offsite NAS that are fast and efficient. For disaster recovery, it's really hard to beat ZFS. And in my opinion, it's the best way to configure secure, reliable offsite backups. So now that we understand the benefits of ZFS, let's talk about how ZFS compares to BTRFS because you've probably noticed a lot of similarities, and I'd say it's the most popular file system for NAS devices outside of ZFS. Both use copy on write, both have checksums, and both have snapshots. BTRFS has a strong integration with some Linux distributions, but it's really designed for smaller arrays. That doesn't mean you can't use it on larger arrays, but it's better for smaller arrays. On the other hand, ZFS is generally the better option for larger arrays, where you want a lot of redundancy, which you can get with its pooled storage and VDEVs. If you just need basic snapshots, BTRFS is great. If your priority is long-term integrity and possible scaling, ZFS is going to win in the long run. With that said though, there are trade-offs with ZFS. ZFS loves RAM and the rule of thumb is more RAM is better. And that will always be true due to how it uses it as cache. You don't need a ton to start, but if you add more later, ZFS will utilize it well, where file systems like BTRFS won't be as efficient. Another trade-off is that planning your VDEV layout up front matters and is arguably the biggest beginner mistake. While ZFS is flexible since you can add VDEVs, changing the shape of an existing VDEV, meaning how many disks are in each VDEV, isn't possible. This means that you need to really plan out your setup in advance, unless you're willing to move all of the data off of your pool, rebuild it with the correct VDEV layout, and then add it back. I say that as somebody who might have experienced that before. So finally, should you consider switching to ZFS? 
If your goal is pure data integrity, the answer is usually yes, and the main benefits are expansion, scrubs, snapshots, and replication, as well as encryption. The downside for most people is not if they should or should not use ZFS. It's what NAS operating system should they use that supports it, and will they understand how to use it? That's generally where TrueNAS comes in, but now certain operating systems like Unraid are supporting ZFS as well, which makes it a little more complicated. The truth is people normally get lost when they start looking at the ZFS. To try and help that, I'm starting a beginner series on TrueNAS that will guide you through the entire process to ensure you don't only get your NAS set up, but you actually understand it. I'll be focusing on TrueNAS because in my opinion, if you wanna use ZFS, TrueNAS is the better option and the best option that you can use, but that does not mean that other NAS operating systems won't work as well. If you wanna see those videos, get subscribed to the channel. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.